For 20 years, Toto lived in a packing crate with a circus in South America. Then, after a remarkable rescue mission by Animal Defenders International, he crossed the globe to reach the renowned chimpanzee sanctuary, Chimfunchi Wildlife Orphanage in Zambia, back home in Africa once again. But this is not the end of Toto's incredible adventure. It is just the beginning of another remarkable chapter of a story that began almost 30 years earlier in the forests of Africa. This is where Toto's life began, a young chimpanzee living amongst his family group, a species which shares 98% of our genetic makeup with the intelligence of a five to six year old human child that communicates, uses tools, and for whom social interaction is so important. A close-knit world where young Toto would still be with and learning from his mother. But aged just two or three years old, Toto's world was shattered. Because this was the day the trappers came. Toto and at least three other baby chimps were shipped to the USA where they were purchased by a circus to tour South America. The other chimps died, leaving Toto alone with the circus for at least 20 years. And so it was that a solitary Toto found himself amusing audiences on the outskirts of Chile's capital, Santiago. It was here that Toto finally had a piece of good fortune and encountered Animal Defenders International, ADI. Like Toto, ADI had followed an unusual trail to get here. ADI was in Chile for the Conference of the Parties to the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species, CITES, where the fate of endangered and threatened species was being fought over by delegates from almost 200 countries. The ADI journey to this particular conference had effectively started seven years earlier, in Mozambique. After learning that an entire animal circus had been left to starve, an ADI rescue team headed out to Maputo. But this was no ordinary circus. This was the Akef Egyptian Circus, widely believed to be a front for animal trafficking. ADI was informed that the circus would arrive in a country with pythons, chimps and other animals and leave with a different menagerie. The circus had even attempted to get permits to trap wild elephants. ADI secured the seizure of every animal, six lions, three tigers, five dogs, three horses, and an African python, successfully rehoming them all, moving most of them to South Africa. As the lions and tigers began new lives in large natural bush enclosures, ADI determined to stop the animal traffickers that use circuses as a cover to move animals across borders. ADI began to lobby for new rules at CITES, a series of animal passports that would make it harder for circuses to change animals as they moved them from country to country. ADI travelled as far afield as Zimbabwe and Portugal to present the case to the CITES authorities. And this was what brought the ADI team to Chile, where new, stricter rules for the cross-border movements of live animal exhibitions were finally secured. The ADI team took a break from the conference to visit a shabby circus on the outskirts of Santiago. It wasn't a strange excursion for ADI, whose investigations of animal circuses had opened people's eyes all over the world to circus animal suffering. Cities had banned circuses. National laws had been changed. Circuses had been closed down. Animal abusers had been brought to justice. Animals had been saved. We were horrified um, by the conditions that we saw Toto in. Um, he was cold, he was shivering, he was in just a packing box. Living in a tiny wooden packing crate, little more than a meter wide, with bars on the front, Toto's only comfort during cold days and nights was to huddle beneath a small blanket. Just before the performance, he climbed up the side of the beast wagon and looked out across the, the landscape and towards the Andes, and the wind bristled his coat 
and he realised that was the only freedom he would ever get. As the entertainer, Toto would be dressed in clothes, paraded round the ring and made to drink coffee and smoke cigarettes. ADI later learned that he had cigarette burns all over his body. The ADI team returned to the conference, wrote letters, issued statements, released the story to the international media and met the Chilean CITES authorities and the relevant government department, SAG. Seven years earlier, the authorities had attempted to seize Toto for lack of proper documentation, but this failed and the circus fled to Bolivia. Now Toto's luck was changing. But vital to any seizure was the matter of temporary accommodation for Toto. Luckily, ADI had already provided funds to a local monkey rescue center. ADI agreed to fund construction of a new enclosure for Toto. If the rescue bid failed, it could still be used for other monkeys. The ministry, SAG, was given a guarantee that ADI would cover all costs for Toto until permanent accommodation could be found. ADI and a TV journalist the team were working with submitted evidence to SAG for use in the prosecution of Toto's owner. SAG secured a conviction and a direction from the judge that legal possession of Toto should pass to ADI in order to return him to Africa. But the circus went underground. ADI was convinced that the circus would reappear and less than three months later it did. Finally, in January, we got a call from a contact who said the circus had been spotted. Within 48 hours, we had a field officer on a flight out to Chile. They located the circus, notified us that Toto was still present, and continued to trail that circus from one place to another until the police and the Chilean ministry were able to move in. It was here that Toto's life with the circus came to an end. The lions roared in the background as the circus workers shouted and protested their innocence, but the confiscation proceeded. Toto was lifted onto a lorry in the cage in which he had spent almost his whole life. He was on his way to freedom. But sadly, through lack of legal protection, the lions and a monkey had to be left behind. A poignant reminder of animal protection still needed. Toto remained calm not realizing what a turn his life was taking. He was friendly, drank from a bottle of water, and even reached out to touch the hand of the ADI field officer. Later, he was sedated, given a veterinary examination, and had blood samples taken. He was flabby, with no muscle tone, had been castrated, and his canine teeth had been pulled out. Other teeth were damaged, and his gums were badly infected. After the examination, Toto gradually awoke to discover more space than he had experienced for years. He played with the wood shavings on the floor of his dormitory and swung in a wonderful new luxury, a hammock. After a period of acclimatization, Toto's excitement was obvious as he suddenly realized he could open the door to his enclosure and headed out to explore. Finally climbing as high as he could, Although a vast improvement on life with the circus, this enclosure was only temporary. Toto was snatched from the wild, and ADI wanted to find him something as close as possible to that. Everyone's hopes for Toto became a reality when Sheila Siddle of the Chimfunchi Wildlife Orphanage was so moved by his terrible story that she agreed to provide him with a secure home for the rest of his life. 13,000 acres there we purchased <clears throat> and government has given us permission and it is registered on a 99-year lease as Chimfunchi Wildlife Orphanage Trust. We know that the chimps have got their own place and people to look after them. This was the ideal home for Toto, with huge enclosures of natural African vegetation and great experience with orphaned and damaged chimps. And it, it is a beautiful feeling to know that You've given them something back that we've taken away from them. Chimfunchi was one of the very few places where Toto would have a real chance of being integrated with a family group of his own species. 
Being a 27-year-old castrated male, there were few options open to him. Toto may have another 30 years ahead of him, so ADI appreciated what a huge commitment Jim Funchi was making. But getting him there wouldn't be simple. Toto was now getting stronger and fitter. ADI had ensured that the dormitory and enclosure could be built and now paid for Toto's day-to-day -day care, including fresh fruit and all veterinary costs. Toto successfully underwent three dental operations, with the vet reporting that he could have died from the infection had he not been treated. And when there were threats of reprisals from the circus, ADI funded security fencing and a mobile phone at the rescue center. In addition to this, ADI funded facilities at the center for rescued laboratory monkeys. These donations will make a lasting impact for animals in Chile. Whilst Toto's recuperation progressed, so did travel arrangements. A special crate was built and import, export and veterinary permits were obtained. Careful negotiations secured the support and some funding of DHL Express, with the DHL Express offices in Chile, South Africa and Zambia throwing themselves into the effort to get Toto home. ADI bore all the other costs of the journey. A press conference was staged with all those who had united to help Toto, including a minister from SAG. Toto's rescue, his torment in the circus, and his imminent move to Africa became headline news, an important opportunity to spread awareness. A dry run of his traveling crate to the airport was staged to ensure that everything would go smoothly. Then in the late afternoon, Toto was anesthetized and carried to his crate, where he would recover, ready for his long journey. At 3 a.m. the following morning, a convoy slowly moved out of the primate rescue center, marking the start of Toto's last great journey for Santiago Airport, then Africa, some 7,000 miles away. At the airport, his crate was unloaded from the truck and Toto had a drink and final checks. Then his crate was closed, strapped down, ready to be loaded onto the 7.30 a.m. flight to Brazil. To add last-minute drama, the circus had launched a legal appeal to prevent Toto from leaving the country. However, the final hearing had been set for 9 a.m. that morning. Toto had already been airborne for an hour and a half, and the judge simply closed the case. The ADI team touched down in Sao Paulo, Brazil, just after noon for a six-hour stopover before the next flight to South Africa, with everyone eager to see how Toto had fared so far. But there was a problem. The Brazilian customs authorities had proved uncooperative, refusing access to Toto. They even threatened to refuse him entry into the country altogether if ADI persisted with requests for access. How could the team give Toto extra fluids before the next leg of the journey? But Toto had another break. The airline, Lan Chile, showed great common sense and allowed Toto to be given his glucose saline drinks prior to entering the customs hall. He was thirsty and drank two whole liters of fluid. Toto would be well hydrated for the journey. Toto was in great spirits and the team's confidence that the journey was going to go well was high. With the sun setting over Brazil, Toto was carefully loaded onto the flight for Johannesburg. Over eight hours later, on the following morning, Toto was unloaded in South Africa. Toto had been asleep but leapt up and shouted with excitement as the crate was opened. He pushed his fingers through the bars of the cage and grinned. A 30-hour stopover was required in order to catch an aircraft large enough to carry Toto. So, it was time to clean out Toto's crate. We had put his crate in the cargo hall right next to one of the DHL offices and there was a glass wall and so he was able to watch the humans doing their work during the day. He was very happy watching his uh, human TV. And then it was on to Zambia. It was dark the following night when Toto finally touched down at Lusaka. His arrival was akin to that of a pop star, with crowds of media racing across the tarmac to greet the aircraft. After more fluids and food, 
Toto settled down in his crate again and was loaded onto a truck for the final leg of his epic journey, with the rest of the team driving behind. The drive uh, would be through the night for the cooler hours to make it more comfortable for Toto. It would take nearly 12 hours to reach Chimfunshi. The sun came up as the team drove further and further north. Then, at 8 a.m. in the morning, they were finally there. This was Chimfunshi. With no forklift truck around, Toto's crate was unloaded with great care and ingenuity by Dave Siddle and the Chimfunshi workers as the resident chimpanzees called out and rushed to the fences, excited by the new arrival. Inside the quarantine center, the crate was opened. An outbounded Toto with a huge grin, seemingly none the worse for wear, whilst the ADI members were considerably bedraggled. It might only be a quarantine pen, but Toto had just touched down in paradise. He was the 100th chimp to arrive at Chimfunchi, and on this day, he was the luckiest chimp in the world. Chimfunchi was founded by Sheila and Dave Siddle to aid chimpanzees in need and has grown to be probably the most renowned sanctuary of its kind in the world, with rescued chimps from across the globe, from pet trade smugglers, circuses, zoos and orphans from poaching. Under the careful supervision of Sheila, abused chimps are nursed back to health and reintegrated into family groups that live in huge natural bush enclosures. Whilst chimpanzees dominate chimfunchi, they are not the only animals. Baboons, vervet monkeys, and all manner of birds have found refuge there. An unusual resident is Billy, a huge one and a half ton hippopotamus. Billy's mother was killed and her orphan baby, Billy, was hand reared by Sheila. Once there were herds of hippo on the nearby Kafui River, but almost all have been killed for meat. Billy is completely free to roam and travels along the river always returning to Chimfunshi where she is fed. Visitors are warned to remain still when Billy passes, and some vehicles bear the scars of her affectionate caress. Toto was oblivious to all this as he bounded from his transport crate, but he was immediately aware of something he had not seen for a very long time, another chimpanzee. In the adjoining quarantine pen was Madonna, a tiny five-year-old chimp who had been poached and taken to Qatar for the pet trade. She was confiscated and ended up in a tiny cage at Doha Zoo, similar in size to Toto's circus crate, before being rescued by Chimfunshi. To everyone's delight, Toto ignored his human rescuers and raced over to Madonna and held her hand through the wire of the cage, his first contact with another chimp for at least 20 years. As the sun set, the night echoed with the calls of chimpanzees. Toto really was in another world. I don't like putting chimps together immediately because they could be fighting and everything. So we usually leave it a week for them to get to know each other. But there was just a feeling and an atmosphere in the air, so we decided to open the door to both of them the next morning. And I think it was just something very amazing. Toto, who hadn't seen another chimp for 26 years, and we were honestly wondering whether he would recognize another chimp. He suddenly sort of, sort of went over to where this door was being opened. Madonna came out of the, through the door, and she put her little arms round his waist, and he looked at her and slowly dropped his head. And I was crying my eyes out and I felt very ashamed of myself and I turned around and realized everybody else was crying as well. It was, it really was wonderful. I mean, they just stayed there like that. It was the most amazing scene. A chimp who hadn't seen another chimp for goodness knows how long, suddenly cuddled this little girl chimp. It was very emotional that night. The pair then scampered around the enclosure, playing, cuddling, tickling. Toto even shared his favorite blanket with Madonna. And so Toto's loneliness finally ended.
Elsewhere at Chimfunshi, the next addition to Toto's future family had already arrived. Fred Sims, a tiny chimp rescued from an illegal pet dealer in Zaire, was being hand-reared in the home of Sheila's daughter, Sylvia Jones. A few months later, Sims joined Toto and Madonna, and rapidly Toto became a very protective mentor and uncle. Sims and Madonna would be safe with Toto around. After quarantine, a wider world was waiting. 14 acres of natural African bush with trees, termite mounds and dense vegetation. The group were anaesthetized and moved to their feeding house. Then for three days, looked out onto the new enclosure before the door was finally opened. With obvious seniority, Toto emerged first, giving a wave to the onlookers. And then it was time for our trio to explore this new world. With Toto leading and Sims desperately clinging on, the group marched into the undergrowth and disappeared from view. Until the next phase of their rehabilitation, this would be their home. Here they could play, groom, be as chimpanzees. Now each day the chimfunchi workers call them in for regular meal times. Sims! Oh, oh, oh! Sims, come! It starts at about half past seven in the morning when Toto, Sims and Madonna come into what we call the night rooms. Toto gets three mealy balls, which is in Shima, the local food, which is very high in protein. And they all get a bottle of milk. Then they come and they spend the whole day outside wandering around doing whatever they want. Half past 11, we get all our chimps in. Toto gets a cage on his own and then Sims and Madonna eat together. This way we can make sure that everyone gets an equal amount. This is the Chinese for Toto, Madonna and Sims. Goes in the box there. They love the Chinese. Feeding is a popular time for the groups of school children who visit Chimfunchi to learn about wildlife and the environment. An education center and dormitories enable hundreds of children to come to learn about animals and the world we share. Madonna and Sims, they get a bottle three times a day. They get the first bottle at seven o'clock in the morning. The second bottle at half past 11, this is what they are getting. The, sec the third bottle, it's half past one. So they get the milk three times a day because they are still small. He's a good boy. He's a good boy, Sims. He's a good boy. He's a good boy. He's a good boy. Oh, gone. Oh, gone, Sims. Feeding time also allows for health checks on the animals. Madonna has a problem with her right eye. It has been checked by a vet who believes it is congenital and there appears little that can be done. Certainly, it does not seem to curb Madonna's boundless energy and enthusiasm. Almost a year after moving him to Zambia, the ADI team who had first filmed Toto with the circus in Santiago returned to Chimfunchi. Sheila led them around the huge enclosure, calling for Toto, but he was nowhere to be seen. It was a strangely moving moment. The team were elated. Toto really was now in a world of his own. They returned later and were lucky to spot first Madonna and Sims, and then Toto himself. It was a dream come true. Madonna is a firecracker and attention seeker. Sims is more cautious, but undoubtedly playful. Toto, however, is much more reserved. A life with the circus, being confined, prodded, stared and jeered at, has left him with no real desire to be watched by people. Yes, he is still gentle, affectionate, and he is certainly responsive to his carers, but he's had enough of people. He just wants to be a chimpanzee. On the first day that we came down here, looking for Toto in his new enclosure, we couldn't find him. And that's exactly how it should be. He should be able to just disappear into the bush, do whatever he wants. 
He is obviously the leader of his small group, much to the frustration of Sims, who is often desperate to go in for his food, whilst Toto takes his time. After all, he's free now. This leads to Sims pounding Toto's considerable bulk with his small fists, pulling his hair and even doing a handstand and hammering him with his feet. It makes little impact on Toto, but eventually he always takes the family inside. Life is idyllic, but there are still challenges ahead. This is part of Chimfunshi known as the project, with four huge enclosures, two of 500 acres and two of 150 acres. Chimpanzees that have successfully formed family groups at the orphanage are released here. The once tormented animals roam free, with some giving birth and raising babies here. These are the biggest chimpanzee enclosures in the world, by a very, very long way. This is Toto's ultimate destination, a brand new 150 acre enclosure. But before that can happen, Toto will need to be completely integrated into a full group of chimpanzees, including sub-adult males. If that is successful, then the entire family will be released here. The prospective family is waiting next door to where Toto, Madonna and Sims are living at the moment, in a 10-acre enclosure of their own. There are 11 chimps of different ages. Nick, Bobby, Julie, Sinky, Cambo, Commando, Chiffon, Berta, Miracle, Kathy and Val. I am slightly worried about Toto because of him being castrated and um, whether these guys will notice that and I, I don't know what their reaction is going to be, so we have to play that very, very slowly. And it can take a long time, but we've got a long time, so we'll do it. First, Toto and family will meet the adolescents in the group. The group is carefully separated at feeding time and then released into the enclosure with Toto, Madonna and Sims. The young chimps are a little bewildered as they tumble out into the unfamiliar space. Commando doesn't really live up to his name and looks nervous throughout the process. But the chimps, albeit often clinging on to each other, start to play and explore. Playful Madonna thinks it's fantastic, greeting and playing with the other chimps. Sims is more cautious, but makes the occasional foray into a game with one or two of the visitors. Toto watches on with the air of an elder statesman, somewhat bemused as someone whose home has just been invaded by a gang of unruly teenagers might be. On opening the doors, Toto at first um, just held on to Sims, wouldn't let him go near them. Um, he just sat there and looked at all these chimps running around. Madonna, she disappeared into the crowd. She played with Chiffon most of the morning. And slowly Sims would go away from Toto and play with Miracle, who's a very uh, gentle chimp. But if the time he would cry, or Toto would rush in to grab Sims to protect him. He was very worried that something was going to happen to Sims. But there is no aggression and everything goes well. The juveniles are lured back into their own enclosure, taking care to ensure Toto, Sims and Madonna do not go with them. Normal life resumes in Toto's world, but there will be more encounters in the future. And the greatest challenge will be when he meets the almost full-grown males particularly Nick and Bobby. With these encounters, there is a risk of aggression, and although Toto is bigger, he has been castrated, and his most important weapons, his canine teeth, were removed by the circus. But Sheila will move forward cautiously. This rehabilitation process could take months, even years, and if this plan doesn't work, another family will be made from other orphans. Toto has landed somewhere with options. The operation to rescue Toto and relocate him to Zambia needed people to come together across four different countries, on three continents, in order to put right a terrible wrong. Most importantly, thanks must go to the individual supporters of ADI who made all this possible with their donations. ADI has continued to make contributions towards Toto's care and now has a special Toto adoption scheme. Money raised will be divided between ADI and Chimpunshi to pay for the care of Toto and other chimps. 
and for the ADI campaign to expose and end the abuse of primates. It's important to remember that there are still chimps like Toto touring with circuses in Europe and the USA. Toto is so lucky to be at uh, Chim Funchi. This really is a wonderful sanctuary. It's everything we could have ever dreamed of for a rescued animal. To see an animal taken from a crate in Chile and to come to this is just an incredible feeling. It's one of those things that you grab onto and realise that there's hope for animals, that if we all pull together, we can do the right thing for them. I would like to say a very, very big thank you to Animal Defenders International for all you have done for Toto and for other animals, but for Toto in particular. When he arrived here in a DHL vehicle, it was quite a thing to see. Um, and for a chimp that age to adjust as he has done, I think is, is absolutely fantastic. And he owes you an awful lot. Toto has a wonderful life ahead of him, perhaps 30 years and today he will sit amongst the branches with the African sun on his back and Madonna and Sims for company. It's a long, long way from the circus in Chile.